In order to get clients or customers off of your website, they need to be able to contact you. Fortunately, Divi comes with a really powerful inbuilt contact form. So let's have a look at it. First thing we're going to do is add in our row, find the contact form module just down here, and that's going to immediately input something that looks like this onto the web page. So we can add and remove sections over here on the left. For example, if we didn't want to have a message section, we can simply come up here, click the bin icon, and that'll get rid of it. And then we can click down here to add a new section. Now, this used to be a little bit basic, but Divi have really, really amped up the game here. It's packed full of really useful features. So uh, just for example, let's put in here, in fact, let's go to field options first. I'll show you what we can do. We've got an input field, which is where somebody can just type in some text. We can have an email field, which is obviously specifically for email addresses, a text area that you can label yourself. You can have checkboxes, which are great for accepting things like terms and conditions. You can have radio buttons if you want circles. And you can have a select drop down so that you can then have a drop down menu listing lots of different options that people can choose from. What's even more impressive, though, is the conditional logic that they've added. This means that sections can appear and disappear depending on what your website visitor has actually selected in the form. This makes it a lot more interactive and fun to use. So for example, as I've currently got select drop down here, uh, if we put in under text here, web hosting plans, and then under our field options, we could do, let's use SiteGround. So we could do their starter plan, and then it's grow big, and then it's Go Geek. We'll just use them as an example, seeing as SiteGround are the best web hosts. And once we've done that, we can choose whether or not we want this to be a required field. So you can do this with anything. If you turn this off, it means that somebody could complete the form. Apart from that section, they'd be able to click Submit, and then you wouldn't get that information. So you don't necessarily want to have this on for everything, but certainly things like name, email, phone potentially, have it on here. Click yes, and that way they're not going to be able to leave it off and submit the form, and then you're accidentally not going to be able to contact them or something. So in this instance, we'll just leave that on. Now that we've done that, we've got those three plans listed under here on the drop down. What we can then do is if I go back, we can add another section, and we'll just call this one options for a second. Go into field options, and then I'll change this to let's change it to tech boxes. Okay, so this can be Option one, option two, option three, you get the idea. Okay, but now this will only appear, or I should say I only want it to appear, when we select the Go Geek plan, for example. So the way I do that is come on down to conditional logic, enable it, and then what we can do is here under rules, choose web hosting plans, because that's obviously what we just created. We could choose name or email address. So when you uh, create a field, it'll appear here. So I'm going to choose web hosting plans. Now here we could do whether it equals an input, doesn't equal it, blah, 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 blah. So this is how you can really start to affect how your form behaves. So, you know, is a field empty? Have they put something in it? This is how you're going to make it interactive for what each individual person is doing with your form. So for the moment, we're just going to leave it on equals and I want it to be the Go Geek plan. So let me show you what that's actually done. If I just click OK for a second, come out of here, and then save this. And now if I exit out of the Visual Builder a second. OK, so here's our form. Click down here. We can choose Starter, and nothing's going to happen. But if we choose Go Geek, suddenly these appear. So that's how we can just make the form a lot more interesting, especially if you've got quite a lot of information that you're wanting to get. It can be off-putting for people to see, you know, loads and loads of different uh, input fields on there. So this means that they can just go through it and it's just going to come up with the ones that are relative to them. It's a lot more friendly. So that's how conditional logic works. I think it is a fantastic feature. I strongly suggest that you use that. Now, if we come back into here, I'll show you how we can uh, make this look a little bit better. So if we come up to the Design tab, we can then go into our fields. So this is the field's background color. We've currently got it as a gray. If I change it to green, obviously they're all going to switch over. I'll undo that though for a second. What would be more useful is, for example, field's focus background color. What this means is that if I select this, when we click into a field, that one and that one alone will change color. 
That can be useful to let people obviously know which one they're currently in, just in case for some reason they, uh, they can't tell. And we can do exactly the same with the uh, focus text color. So we could change that to red and then we click in there and that becomes red. I'll put that back for a second. What we can then do is also add in field margins and padding so we can change around the spacing here. We can change the fonts, the font weights, and obviously the styling, capitalized for example, just as you can with a normal text module in Divi. Uh, field text alignment's quite cool, so we can then move those over to the middle where they apply. Obviously, it's not going to affect a drop down box. I'll move it back. And that's how that works. So, styling is very similar to everything else with Divi. Once you've got your head around it for one module, all the others make sense because it's exactly the same. Uh, capture text, this is cool though. So, if you want to change this down here, for example, uh, you know, if we didn't have a white background, if we had a, a darker background, you might want to change it to be a white color. Or for now, I'll just change it to orange and we can see that that changes the color of it down there. So that's just really easy to do. You don't have to go in and add any code like you used to. It's now here. You can obviously change the size of it as well. So we can bring that right up and down. I'll just bring it back to where it was though. And that's assuming that you actually uh, want to have this. So I'll show you how we can take that off in a second. Obviously, if you want to style the button, come down to button, use custom uh, font styles, and we can then start changing this around as well. So if you, for any reason, didn't want the capture, you have to come back up to content, come on down, and it's under spam protection. So if we turn this off, that's gonna disappear. I generally suggest that you have it on though, because obviously it's gonna stop uh, bots from getting through. It's only gonna be real people. And let's be honest, zero plus three isn't too taxing. If uh, somebody can't work that one out, I really don't think they should be on your website in the first place. Although to be fair, I have seen some that are a little bit more complicated than that. Um, if you have a separate spam service, you can turn it on there if you want to. Uh, background, by the way, if you want to add a background in, you can. Obviously, you're then going to need to adjust the padding of it and the other form fields because it's going to look a little bit strange, but you can do that as well. And then uh, email is important. Uh, in fact, it's the most important. So you can put in the email address here in the email address field that you're wanting it to be sent to. So that'll be yours. And if you're having any problems with this where you're trying to test it out and for some reason the form's not working and you're not getting emails being sent through, what you're going to need to do is add an SMTP provider. There's uh, lots of plugins that can do that for you. I will show you that in just a moment. Uh, for now, though, what you want to do is look under message pattern. So what this means is how do you want all this information to come through on the email? So I obviously got rid of the actual uh, message text box, but if, if we had one still in there and we wanted that to be last, for example, and we wanted all of our other information to be first, what we would do is input it using the percentage signs. So I'd put in percentage name like this, and we'd do that for all of the different fields that we've got here. And then at the end, I would put in message. And that just means that no matter what order I actually had these in, that's how it would come through in the email. Um, so if I just click up here, this is just telling that to you. So you can put in the field ID between the percentage marks, and then that's how it's gonna come in. You can also put in separate text between it. So for example, my message is percentage, percentage, message, percentage, percentage, and phone number is blah, blah, blah. So that is purely so that you can order your email. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, once you've done that, what you can do is set up a redirect. So if you wanted to send them through to a different URL, once they've inputted the form, you can do that. That can be quite nice if you've got a separate thank you page, or perhaps if you were wanting them to download something after they've uh, submitted the contact form, you can do that. Just enable this and then obviously put in the URL you want to send it to. And uh, of course, if you actually want to change any of these, what you can do is simply click and drag. So if we click and drag these into separate places, it's going to move them around the page. So that's how you can order them nicely. And that's pretty much it for designing them. Uh, just back onto the subject of actually sending emails, if you're having a problem with that, come out of here for a second. Save this. Right, head on back to your dashboard. Go to plugins and add new. As I mentioned, there are quite a few that you can use. One that I do suggest though is WP Mail SMTP. Okay, this is by the makers of WP Forms. And if you know them, you're gonna know that the quality is really high. Uh, it's really, really simple and easy to use. 
because quite often the problem with WordPress websites, the reason the emails aren't going through, uh, it could be something as simple as uh, your host has blocked PHP from coming through. If you use shared hosting, it is quite common. So basically use this. It's going to get rid of that problem for you. It makes it secure and it's going to make sure that your Divi contact form emails actually come through to you, which is all important. So that's it, really nice and simple. Using that, you should be able to make some really good looking contact forms and start getting more customer quotes and queries come through to you in no time at all.